<clears throat> I can't tell if I'm having bad allergies or if I'm sick. So, guys, I apologize. I don't feel great this morning. Oh, I didn't enable it. Didn't set up the chat. What's up, Bill? <clears throat> getting sick. Yeah, I'm making it right now. I, I can't tell if I'm getting sick or if my allergies are fucking killing me. <laughs> Live chat. Remember, guard your privacy and abide by the community guidelines. <clears throat> Yeah, you. Just because it's here. So you guys usually sit on this can of coffee. I use, I'm just, I'm out of the, the, not out. I just haven't opened a new bag of the good coffee. That uh, David sent me. So I don't want to go in the bedroom. I just realized there isn't any in there. So I'm going to use this. Which, not gonna lie, Kirkland's coffee is I didn't wear underwear for years. It wasn't a comfort factor. You ready for this? If I don't wear underwear, it's one less fucking thing I gotta wash. Yeah, yeah, I'm not lazy. Hang on a second, let me do this coffee thing. So, I know there's a lot of people who are going to Blade Show and leaving, like, here, here in the next couple days. I know that one of my friends, Joe, is already in Atlanta. Uh, Jeff, I know you watch these. Jeff is going, so I hope Jeff has a good time. Let's see. Chris and Elliot are leaving Thursday. I haven't, we haven't decided yet how they're getting to the airport. I told them I'm willing to take them to the airport. Uh, so we're just trying to get that piece figured out. Let me see what a shopping list at the commissary or shopping receipt at the commissary looks like for three people. I'm glad you guys are getting to go. Hang on a second, and I'll tell you my thoughts on this. We had a guy, like I said, we had that guy that promised to have the lodging, was going to send us ticket vouchers and all this stuff. and Kind of put our eggs in that basket. I'm glad we didn't buy fucking plane tickets. Glad we didn't buy plane tickets because we'd be fucked right now. We would have a plane ticket, no lodging. So, there's our Blade Show trip, in a nutshell. Believe somebody on Instagram, there's, there's our Blade Show trip, in a, or a lack of our Blade Show trip, in a, in a uh, nutshell. What's going on, Chris? That doesn't bother me as much as the whole lying about the sponsor my daughter thing. That, that's the one that really, that gets me kind of upset and wound up. It's taking forever. This coffee pot takes forever. This coffee pot had this thing on it that said, brews three times faster. The old coffee pot was fairly quick. And this one isn't slow, but if it was brewing three times faster, I do believe that I'd already have coffee in my hand by now. Because... Nico, here's the thing. So Nico had three of his knives that he was for almost a year. It's been, it's been a year. And this is the thing I forgot about when I was dealing with all this. Nico bought three knives for him almost a year ago. And then I was supposed to pay him back out of all this money that was supposed to be coming. So Nico's selling those knives. I think he's already sold two of them. I think they're already gone. 
And the kicker is like all this thing, like it's so hard to get the money transferred and this and that. And I was like, I got customers overseas. I have no problem getting money into PayPal from. So I'm not going to get into the big, into a big stink of it. You know, it happens. People lie to people. But the one was it's people lie to your kid and then you get upset because it's not like, it's not like he just told me he was going to do it. He told my wife and daughter to their face that he was going to deposit that money and put it in my daughter's account. I made an account for her. He had the routing number so he could deposit. Can't take anything out. It's not like I ever, it, it financially does nothing for, I don't understand it because it financially does nothing for that person. No, but see, here's the thing. It would have been, it was the exact opposite. But he had, I mean, I'd had interactions with him before. I made a knife for him, stuff like that. But at any rate, it's morning coffee time. I have nothing really big going on today. Today is just like touch up, finish up stuff. I have some stuff for Dwayne that I'm shipping. Um, basically, today is, I'm, I'm glad I don't, of all the days to not feel good, today's the day. Because I have stuff that's coming and I have a bunch of emails pending that came in. I didn't, so you guys didn't see it. Sorry to go down that road I was just curious <clears throat> I uh I did a bunch of work over the weekend I mean like I was talking I you guys caught the Instagram live feed like three o'clock in the morning on uh Sunday morning or Saturday morning I worked Friday Saturday just those two days I worked about 32 hours in two days 32 out of those 48 were work and then saturday i was doing stuff here i didn't fucking do anything i and then yesterday i took day off there's a chance today might be a day off i don't feel good because i'm gonna start taking two days off a week because i just realized that i was just running myself to death come on coffee fucking three times faster three times faster than maybe if i was boiling water on the stove to do it. I should go get that stuff. You guys want to see what I worked on? I know some of you probably already saw it on Instagram. Hang on a second. Let me go to my car. Jeez, guys, I'm on the fucking struggle bus for real. Hang on, I'll just take you with me and go get it. That way, that way you're not just like, where the fuck is he? I can't get into my car. Because someone locked my car. Probably my wife. She's famous for that. She'll grab her stuff. Try not to lose you. Try not to lose you. Gotcha. You guys still here? Trying to see. Guys, I'm not joking. I know it sounds goofy when I tell you guys this, but the thumbs up thing, like when you guys log into a video, if you like my videos, just give them a thumbs up when you commit because that's, that's the new algorithm with YouTube. It's not views. I don't give a fuck how many views you get. What it is, it's impressions from your thumbnail. How many times people have viewed that? and how many thumbs up you're getting. So it's, it's not like, I, cause I, I don't get paid. It's not like I get paid for thumbs up, but what it does is because I want this to channel to keep growing because then we get better comment sections. We get, oh, we get, Jesus Christ. Cheese and rice, hang on. But I, I've been saying it, and I'm like, people aren't giving the thumbs up. I don't think they understand. That's how we get a better, bigger community. That's how we get more people on live feeds is the likes go into an algorithm where they – impressions and shows. Let me take a day off before I burn my house down. I wouldn't burn the house down. This one. 
Let's save this one. So Jeff, Jeff sent me an ADV. Nope, that doesn't work. We're just gonna have to do it with ambient light. I mean, if you want to, I'm just saying that, that the, when you do it, when the video goes up, then the fat, the more lights you get, the sooner after the video goes up, what happens is it changes its interaction and it gets recommended more. And it's just a big thing. Yeah, but the thing is, I can, I can get rid of the dumb people. It's real easy. I do it all the time. So anyway, we ha he, he, Jeff gave me a ADV Hummer that he just wanted a black blade on. And I mean, that's, that's basically it. I just did a black ceramic blade, which I think made the knife look way, way cooler. I am going to have to turn some lights on. Hang on. Let me see if I can get this one on. I'm going to turn this one on. Give me a second. I know it don't agree. Let me see if that light helps. Did that one help? Yeah, I, didn't, I don't think that the, I don't think any of them helped. Anyway, I did just did a black ceramic blade. So that was like, that's the first knife I did for him. And we kind of worked our way into, did you know, we just said that this one was black ceramic and then this one, Hornet. This one we decided we were gonna do the black and bronze, right? Bronze flats. Bronze, here, I'll turn it around. You're not gonna be able to see it real well, with the, even with those lights on, especially with those. So, bronze flats, bronze orange peel, black, that black line stayed. And then we just are gonna just sharpen the blade on this. Maybe it's not because I think it is. Maybe it's because my screen brightness was turned way down. Sorry, guys. I keep complaining about the light. Is the light good? Let's let's go back and try that again. Oh, yeah, that's way better. I had the screen brightness turned all the way down. And I'm like, why is it so dark? So let me see. Could you guys? Oh, yeah, you guys could see that. So then the third knife that was in the box... third knife that was in the box of things that he wanted to do was a Curtis F3. And he, I was like, so do you, you know, we had already talked about what we were going to do with both of these. And, you know, he had idea and I, and then we, we stuck on this one. And I was like, okay. Then on the Curtis, he's like, you know, I just, he's like, why don't you just surprise me? Okay. This is the one that I did, the black down in the milling lines, the polished pivot with purple down inside and blue on top, purple down inside the holes. It's not gonna show up real well. Black milling line, and then I took the pocket clip and I tried to match the pocket clip to the logo. So we'll have to turn it around so you can actually see it. So the pocket clip is actually Bronze and red. Just like Come on, come on, come on, work with me here. Let me get these lined up. See? See what I was going for? And then an all black ceramic blade. And I need to clean it up because I put too much oil in it. When I was breaking it in, I was putting too big. You can see the purple down in the, in the low spots. And then black ceramic down in all the milling lines. And then just, just a regular stone wash and blue on top. Now it needs washed off. I'm going to have to sharpen it still too. But I also did, and I'm, I'm not sure if I'm happy with it yet or not. It just seems like I, I tried a bunch of stuff with this Browse, and it just didn't quite come out. 
so it's just black and it's black and bronze. And I like it, but Yeah. If well you guys have seen my DOC, like how how shiny the red looks on that, but when you see other stuff, the red just looks subdued. Well, that's because my DOC, I didn't blast it. I just, I left it exactly the way it came from the factory and put red ceramic on top of it. Which all of my knives are in my car. I don't have a knife in my pocket right now. That's all right, that's all right, I got this. Yeah, so you get the red, that red uh, on my DOC is really vibrant and, and polished and all that. Well, that's because I, that's the finish that was on it. Speaking of which, there are knives in my car. That... What blade is that bronze one? Uh, that is the JB Stout Chavez Colab Megalodon. So, give me a second, I'm gonna grab some coffee. I think my sister's right. I have things that I actually have to do today, though. So, taking a day off is not actually gonna be a day off. It's just gonna be a day of doing stuff that's maybe not here. I need to get a new sink for my side of the downstairs bathroom because mine is starting to just come apart. It's the, there's cheap. Yes, I said you were right. I'm still probably going to sharpen some stuff, so. But I don't, like, seriously, I think I'm getting sick. <clears throat> Yeah, my throat is killing me. I can't breathe. Typhoid Mary probably brought something home. So I got I got um I got enough done Friday and Thursday that uh I'm almost afraid. I got enough done that I only had a couple things to do Saturday, so I got those done real quick and uh you know I got to spend time with my daughter when they got back from ice skating, but I slept <laughs> I slept till fucking noon on Saturday because I didn't even get home. I didn't even get here to the house until almost four. Like I was getting in bed after I, I took a shower and got in bed and my wife's alarm went off for them to go skating. And she's like, oh, are you up? And I was like, I just fucking got home. So that Curtis, uh -huh. The Curtis wasn't what held me up. I was having a hard time. I was playing with that Browse. I'm gonna tell you something, I like Jason and I like Jason's knives. I know that there's some controversy there. Uh... Um, that action, because it has an adjustable thing. Well, the problem is there's a set screw down in there that sets that. The second I took it out, I lost the action on it. It was so hard to get it to where it would actually flip. And it's still, I mean, it always had a soft action. I think I'm gonna try and uh, adjust the lock bar tension a little bit um, without doing any of that. But the rest of this is gonna be, I think I want to put a pattern on this. Because there's, there's a guy that basically is thinking about buying this. He's already said he wants to buy the ADV. Where is my other ADV? The Judge Dread, it's here. I just moved it, so it's out of my wife's way. But yeah, he said he wants to buy, basically he's he's thinking he wants to buy both of them. So this one, I mean, I'm willing to let go just for the price of the knife. Uh, because the work on it, there's, there's so much, such a pain to do even just the bronze. It's just, it took forever to tumble. And I think I wanna take it back apart and tumble it some more, but. Nice thing is I don't have to take the lock bar assembly completely apart for that. So I won't have to worry about um, losing my lock interface and detent. So there's a couple things I want to do with it. 
but um, I was thinking about a pattern on here of some sorts, but I hadn't decided yet. Problem is, then it's not gonna match. It's, I would basically have to start all over. What's somebody else doing on this <coughs> fine month? <coughs> Pardon, fine Monday morning. Um, that's full titanium. I don't know. I've, I've only ever had two Browse blades, and I sold the one to Charles Anderson in Sweden, which I actually liked that knife. It was just not something I would carry. Then there's this one, which I like, but I've carried it, and it it doesn't sit the way I want it. It's I don't like deep carry. And so I didn't, I stopped carrying it because I was like, you know, I don't fucking really like this. I carried it like twice. And I'm like, I don't like the way it sits in my pocket. Speaking of pocket, my pocket is empty. Give me just a second. There we go. That's better. I felt naked. So my knife case is locked up in the trunk of my car. I took it to the shop over to weekend because I have knives in there that I was like looking at different things, laying them out and looking at it, trying to figure out what I want to do on a couple of knives. So Master Blaster. Master Blaster needs a new stop pin. The Lock Rock has reemerged. It's just that the stop pin is just the the interface it just it changes it's, it's minor minor i can fucking live with it but this also has developed lock rock <clears throat> then there's this it gets carried a lot it's a bottle opener yeah a bottle opener it's exactly what it is it's just about this you know what this is the only nook that I've ever had that I picked up and I put on my hand and I'm like, oh, I could use that and I wouldn't break my fucking hand. Rat Bastard Knives. My friend Nathan makes these. So it's got, uh, I can't remember what size the um, wrenches are that are on it. And then, um, wait, what were we talking about? And what's $1,200? Working, just made a delivery to Carpenter Steel Facility. Well, it's $1,200. No, I, I, I read some of the Warhammer books. They're actually okay books. The video game was great. The one for PS3, the third person shooter one. <clears throat> I, I carry this a lot. This winds up in my pocket because it is a great little bottle opener and it doesn't look like it, but if you get... I, mean, I fucking hit somebody with this, they're fucking done skis. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All day, twice on Sunday. Oh, the Horus Heresy. I read that one. I think I'm reading. I was reading one and then got partway through it and didn't didn't get through the rest. <laughs> I would love them to make more than just the cartoon movie that they have. Yeah, I'm a geek too. I, I can fucking admit it. There is a movie um, that shows. I asked Ellie about it. He really wasn't all those. I've asked him about those books. He wasn't all that interested in it. They're, uh, they re I forget what one it <coughs> is that they really, <coughs> really like. What's going on, Jason? I'm 
not gonna get to see it blade. All right, well, I don't wanna talk about books. That's not what I wanna talk about. It's not so much a book channel. But yeah, those are good books. Um, what was the other one that I was gonna tell you guys? I don't know, I gotta figure out, I got something I'm gonna figure out in a week or so. We had a friend of ours for, uh, huh, I got two ninety nine. I could almost buy coffee. I just, I got enough, now I can. Now I could actually go buy coffee. I'm not gonna buy coffee. I stopped at a Starbucks the other day. And where was I going? I went to base and I just like, I need coffee. And there's a Starbucks everywhere. And always, there's always a Starbucks on base. And so I go in and I go to the Starbucks. And I, fucking, I was like, can I just get a medium, whatever they call their medium. Uh, I was like, just black coffee. And I fucking didn't, the fucking price. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? I forget how much, I forget how much it was, but it was enough that it made me go, are you out of your fucking mind? I fucking hate Starbucks. And then the coffee's like all sour and nasty. And I, she's like, would you like room for cream? And I was like, I could smell it. It was all sour. I was like, yeah, I'm definitely going to want fucking. But you can't, they never like have it on. I'm like, oh, well, we'd have to make it. And I was like, well, fuck it. I'll take that goddamn Pike's. I'll take a glass, I'll take a fucking cup of Pike and it's going to be burnt and sour. And it's not because of the way they make it. It's because of the way they roast the fucking beans. It's just horrible. It's just horrible. That Phil's coffee is like fucking thousand times better than fucking Starbucks. I just can't figure out how they sell fucking, well, basically Navy ship coffee at the prices they sell it. Because the only reason we ever drank that shit is because, well, that's what we fucking had. Peter, you should think about the sexual connotations about what you say because frappuccinos, that's a fucking milkshake. I don't like to start my day with a milkshake. I prefer Dunkin' Donuts coffee any day over Starbucks. I don't even really like Dunkin' Donuts coffee, but I could fucking tell you I like it more than I like fucking Starbucks. So, the, uh, <clears throat> deal with knives so if you guys are if you guys have ordered a knife for me I don't have belts I haven't like I've got that guy I'm gonna I've got to get reach out to him and tell him because I've got his stuff set up for heat treat his knife is basically ready to get started I just got to order belts so I'm gonna have to order probably like $200 worth of belts so once I order those belts, I'm going to get started on some stuff because I'm going to order more belts than I need just to do like the last couple of Hornets, which then I'm going to try and do something special with the other Hornets. And I've got to ask a couple people's advice on this. I have a couple pieces of 1095 steel and I'm thinking that because I know you can do it, that I might be able to do a true Hamon. Um, I just don't know how I could do it with an oven, not a forge. So here comes the problem. I do know a couple people that have forges, but they're not very good at what they do. And I, I'm not picking on them. They're just, they got into it as a hobby. And so now I have access to an actual forge. But the problem is I don't have access to somebody that has a forge and knows exactly what they're doing. You know what I mean? There's a difference. And like I said, well, I don't like Damascus Steel. I have the utmost respect for those guys that are able to eyeball the color and quench their shit and get the fucking hamon on it. Like, like, uh, uh, Aaron Frederick on that smash it, stuff like that. I can't, I can't do that. I've never, blacksmithing, that's basically like true, no joke blacksmithing. So... That, that's one of those ones where I'm like, I, I don't know. Who's Chad? Oh, fuck. I don't give a fuck about Chad Nichols. I see his knives and I'm like, every one of them, I'm like, but they're, 
They're just shiny. Yeah, see what I'm saying? I know a bunch of people that have forges, and what I don't want to do is put a bunch of work into something that I'm planning on selling as a, as a complete one-off uh, that there would only be like two of, but when it comes down to it, then I don't have access to somebody. Oh, that's great. I'll tell you what, I've talked to a lot of people that, that seem like they're nice guys, and then they turn into, like you find out about them, and you're like, that guy's just a fucking dick. So, I was thinking that I could find a way to try and do a true homo. Go back and watch it again. A true homo on that 1095, like, like Aaron Frederick did on the Smatch It, and that would be really cool. <laughs> so, I don't, I, I imagine he did. That's one of the few ways. Like, I mean, I think I could do it in the oven. I would just have to get it up to temperature, but the refractory cement... I don't know if I can get that refractory cement to stay in the oven without popping and flaking off. That's not the point, Peter. You're not listening. Peter, listen to all the words. Listen to all the words. I know how to do that. I'm saying I don't know like what temperatures and stuff like that. I'm not saying I don't know how to use the clay. I know exactly how to use the clay. I just don't know how to use it in an oven. You're that guy that catches like the first three three words of a sentence and then words are hard. Yeah, ask Peter. Mr. Punctuation is beneath me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about Chad Nell. Like Chad, yeah, Chad Nichols. I do like Chad Nell. I have talked to Chad Nichols. You're right. I'm sorry. I'm getting... I don't feel good. I'm getting people mixed up. Thank you, Jason. And I don't, I don't know if Chad Nell was a nice guy or not. He could seem like a great guy. Uh, no, Chad Nichols, actually. Yeah, Chad Nichols is actually a really good guy. What's up, Herb Toker? So... You you have been you have been the subject of much hilarious ridicule with that email you sent. What's happening? I don't feel good. I think I think we're gonna cut this one. It's eight o'clock. I started early. I don't feel good. My guts are bothering me now. I have, I don't know if you guys have seen these. This was great. Uh, Amanda gave this to me. She had a backpack full of stuff. She's just going to throw most of it away. This is a brilliant solution. California's straw band. It's brilliant. I gave it to my daughter. It's, it's great. It is a very, very good solution to this fucking bullshit. Because I don't know if you guys ever tried to use a paper straw. They've done that for a long time at, uh, at certain places. The San Diego Zoo. You're not allowed to have a straw, like a plastic straw. Like if you come in and you've got a, a cup that's got a plastic straw, like a disposable straw, they stop you. They make you throw it away before you ever come in park. Now you can buy sippy cups with the, the fucking part that's down it, which I was like, I don't understand that. These kids that throw that just as easily as they'll throw a regular straw. It is for animal safety. And if you've ever used a paper straw, it's, they don't work great. So a paper straw sucks. It's the nanny state. I have a piece of tubing somewhere that I managed to get uh, sent to me, which is titanium tubing that I'm going to heat into a, and bend into a, uh, you got to fill it with sand first. That's thanks. So you don't crimp it, but, um, I'm going to make a straw for my daughter. Well, see, here's the thing. You can still get straws. You can still get plastic straws and there's still places still aren't following the rules. You're not supposed to have the straws out. 
somebody's supposed to ask for them. If you go to the Anna, <laughs> we went to Disneyland, uh, Di uh, not Disneyland, downtown Disney after my daughter's competition that time. And we stopped at that. My daughter loves McDonald's. And we only have it. She only gets it on rare occasions because we just don't eat. We don't eat fast food, junk food. It's not a money thing. We just don't do it. Um, and so that McDonald's still just has straws just laying out. They don't fucking care. But what it is is you're supposed to, you can actually get fined for this. You're supposed to have the straws in the back. And if you want a straw, like restaurants are not supposed to give you, you have to ask for a straw. Which a lot of places, like if you go to a sit-down restaurant, I don't use a straw. You know why? Because I'm fucking drinking coffee. <laughs> I don't drink coffee at McDonald's, though. So if you get a soda at McDonald's, you're supposed to have to ask for a straw. If you were at, like, the Cheesecake Factory and they, you order iced tea, you're supposed to say, iced tea, and can I have a straw? They just not, they're not supposed to automatically give them to you. And I think it's a, it's a multi-step thing. It's like this goddamn stupid minimum wage. They keep raising the minimum wage every year until they get to like $15 an hour. You know what? I will talk about this. The minimum wage thing. You know why the minimum wage thing is going to piss off people and they're just going to leave companies because companies are, are raising the minimum wage? Because you've got guys that have been there for a while that have proven themselves and they're not going to get a pay raise. But the kid that started two weeks ago is going to get a pay raise just because that's the rules. You have to raise it. And I was like, I'm like, okay, that diminishes and, and, and makes it feel like they don't give a fuck about me. I've been here for 10 years, man. I'm fucking working. I'm doing the job. I learned the job and I'm getting, because what's going to happen is you're going to have people that were, that were making $15, $17 an hour because of, on the merits of their work. And then when it comes down to it, they're only going to get paid uh, maybe a few cents more than the guy that just showed up. What benefit is it? Because that guy's not going to stick. I got news for you. Guys that come in, the, the guys that come in and work someplace, like, and I'm not talking like, I'm not talking like McDonald's. I'm talking about places like actual, like, let's say a machinery repair place or a, a garage or something like that, where it's like skilled to, you know, somewhat skilled labor. Like, um, you come in, you're working in a machine shop and you're learning the roots, right? And, oh, Brian, good for you. That's a good knife. So you've got these guys that, that maybe they've worked their way to $17 an hour, you know, because they had to start low. They've been there for years, but the minimum wage keeps increasing to the point where the company's now spending so much money on these new employees that are fucking not, they don't know a fucking thing that they can't, that they can't pay to pay a, a pay increase for the guys that are actually showing one loyalty to the company, fucking willingness to be part of a team and the ability to actually do that job. So you're going to have a bunch of people that are getting paid. The company pays to onboard them. The company pays for all these things. They get them, then they're paying the minimum wage and they can't afford to pay these other guys. And then those guys leave. And that's money that the company's invested in that individual. Because onboarding an employee, having worked in the insurance industry, I can tell you that onboarding an employee, just onboarding an employee to, to get them set up and get them ready if they're going to get benefits and, sh and get everything set up and all that HR shit that goes on with that plus training, two to six months wages. That's what the company invests just to bring on a new employee. And if that guy doesn't stay, that's just to bring him on. That's not talking about the fact that you're still paying his wages. And then that guy leaves because he's like, fuck this place. Fuck this place, man. 15 bucks an hour is not enough. But you got guys that are doing the same job, been doing it for 10, 15 years. They're making fucking 17 to $18 an hour, which was a good wage at one point. But now we've raised the minimum wage to the point where you can pretty much live at any job. And that's not how it's supposed to work. Those jobs that they're wanting to raise, those minimum wage jobs, those are stepping stone jobs. That teaches you how to work. It gets you into a workforce and teaches you how to work and how to be a productive member of a working society. And paying them more just lets them fucking stagnate. 
to, it's, they say it's between, depending on, depending on a company, depending on benefits levels and things like that. But when you look at the HR work that you're doing to onboard this employee and the training and stuff like that, it's, I do not, this is one time I do not disagree, but let's not pontificate on that one, Peter. Um, it, it, it varies depending on what all you have to provide for that employee. That employee is going to be somebody that, that is a full-time employee that requires benefits and all these things, all that work that gets set up to do that and documenting when he came on and making sure that he has all that information and knows what he's uh, is available to it and all that. It's anywhere between two and six months worth of wages to bring that person on board. And then if that person leaves three months into that, 90 days into it, they're like, eh, I'm out. Well, then you've, that's not a good return on investment. Exactly. You, because someone has to take their time. Let's say it's a, a partially skilled, let's say it's skilled, somewhat skilled labor. Like somebody's running a, somebody's a whole job is to run the, this, this machine, this part comes out, spins, and he's just knocking the burrs off of it. Running a deburring tool or clean out whole, he still has to learn how to do it. You can't just go, all right, go to work. Someone has to show him, here's this, here's this, here is the, here's the safety equipment. This is a PPE you gotta wear. This is the first step. And so basically you've got a guy that could be producing that has to dumb it down, slow way down. So you're slowing down on top of the fact that you have to pay all that stuff. Now you have an employee that has to, he's basically slowing down production for the entire plant to teach this new guy how to do it. Does that make sense? I mean, so the the cost of that minimum wage is, I haven't met him, but I've talked to him a bunch of times. Um, that, that's the unseen cost of that. Oh, we'll just raise the minimum wage. Why, why raise the minimum wage? Right? Make it easier for people just to do as little as possible. What you want is you want to challenge people. Okay, well, we're not going to raise the minimum wage. What we're going to do is we're going to take all that money and we're going to invest it in our employees that are currently here and strengthen our existing workforce by showing them we give a fuck about them and that, you know what, because you've been here, you've got to earn that. That's, it shouldn't be that like, you step into it and you just you get it. You should have to fucking earn that. you got to do it in the military. My first... <laughs> My first month, my first paycheck I got in the military was $210. $210 for half a month. I want you to put that in perspective of what you would make if you were making $15 an hour working 35 hours a week. I didn't make very much fucking money. But the flip side of that was I didn't have much I had to pay for. As you progress, you earn that. It shouldn't, nothing should ever be given to you. It was, I told my, told my daughter here not too long ago, we were talking about things being difficult and she's like, you know, this is hard and this and that. And I told her, I was like, look, but here's the deal, honey. A road with no obstacles usually doesn't lead anywhere. If things are easy, if things are going easy, you're going down the wrong road because nothing in life is better for you as a person than challenge. If we make it too easy for people, well, then you get idiocracy. You get that movie. That, that is what is happening. There are no ramifications for not being a worthwhile individual. We've gotten rid of them. Everybody counts. Everybody counts. I got news for you. I don't wanna sound like a cold prick. Not everybody counts. Not everybody counts. If you're not willing to put anything into it, then you don't fucking count. You're a waste of skin. And you're the problem with society. Society should not have to. Now, do I believe that, yes, we should be helping these veterans that are broken mentally and physically that can't work and they're on the streets and no one seems to give a fuck about them? Those people? Yeah, because guess what? They have earned it. But your average 17-year-old kid that comes out, basically the, comes out of high school and the, and the world just hands them everything because that's what everyone thinks they should. No, you don't have a vote.
No, we don't actually have a vote. We don't actually have a vote. It's another lie that has been propagated by the federal government, which, yes, I do agree with that we have to. As much as I'm happy about some of the people that have won this way, if you look at the popular vote, the last two or three presidents that were elected didn't win on the popular vote. They won an electoral college. I gave my vote to a couple other people who didn't necessarily vote the way I wanted. You see what I'm saying? Electoral college needs to go the fuck away. Our voting system's broken anyway. How, how, can, you, how can you win the election without winning the popular vote? At this point, at this point, there is no reason to continue using the electoral, co electoral college. Yes, at one point there was. There was a reason behind the electoral college, but at this point, with technology being what it is, and we can count votes like that, and fucking, the only thing you have to do is wait on some fucking elect. Peter, I was about to put you in, I was about to put you in um, timeout, because all you would do is be contrary, so I'm just not gonna listen. What's my PayPal? Uh, do me a favor, uh, you got a pen and a paper? It's just, it's michael.emler at me.com. Or I think I have it set up that you can just type in Crazy Sharp. I think Crazy Sharp is, I have a, I have a business profile, so I think you should be able to type in Crazy Sharp. So, it's just, you know, Electoral College maybe at one point, but at this point, well, I got news for you. It doesn't ever work that way. They don't ever vote. You're giving your vote to someone who's going to vote the way they want. Yes, you are. If you want the true, now that we have the technology to do it, what you do is, and it's not, it should not be based on a state, like that state, okay, there was more people that, that voted this way than this way. So basically what you've done is you've negated these people's vote. Because if you went by the popular vote, everyone's vote then, yes, would count. Currently, your vote does not count. The only reason I voted, could I post a link? Nah, but what you can do is as soon as this is over, just email me. My email is in the, in the, it's always in the description. The gunner, or I'm sorry, the gunmonkey1974 at gmail.com. Just email it to me and I'll, I'll, I'll shoot you a link. So to say your vote counts, everybody has a vote, but very few of them actually count. Because what you wind up with is a very limited number of votes that depending on the individual that's, that's representing that vote, or, or whether the state was more on this side than this side, you basically have, have negated people's votes with, by still using the Electoral College, especially when we have, like I said, the technology to make the popular vote. <coughs> but here's the thing, we have technology to make the popular vote a, a viable, a viable tool. Now, we don't need the Electoral College. The Electoral College was based, like you said, we had scattered populace and things like that. Shut up, Peter. <laughs> You're being ignorant. The Electoral College was in a time where you couldn't necessarily get all of the popular vote, but you could get a bias per area one way or the other, and therefore you use the Electoral College. Yeah, it's, I know it's constant. We still say the same thing. It's not a democracy. I know that, but we always used to joke about it um, to, uh, oh, holy crap, that was the GoFundMe. I thought you were talking about my PayPal. So... Thank you very much, Southern Boy, for donating to the, the ice skating thing. So, I mean, let's just agree to disagree because here's the thing you should never do is argue about politics. What was that? Hell with it. What?
Yes, I know we have a constitutional... <sighs> Guys, I feel worse as this is rolling. I took some medicine. I'm not feeling any better. I think I'm running a fever. We'll solve that problem right there. My back hurts anyway. I don't know what I would have gotten. I, I can't tell if I'm... Because I, I woke up and I was just fucking soaked in sweat this morning. I'm just saying, we should go to the popular vote. Because this would this would get rid of all this shit that has been the debate. I voted, yes. Did I vote for Trump? Yes, I voted for Trump. You know why I voted for Trump? Because I didn't have somebody to vote for. I just knew who I was voting against. And the main reason was, everybody's like, oh, I can't believe you didn't like Hillary. The shit that Hillary did with confidential information and shit like that when she was Secretary of State, the average Navy E6 would have been in prison, lost his career, lost his money, and, and fucking his family, and just been ruined. And she got away with it. I liked, I liked Trump enough to vote for him. Uh, the year before that, I, I did write-ins. I... I'll, every time I voted before that, if there wasn't a candidate that I truly felt that I would vote for, I did a write-in. So, but uh, let's not waste this time fucking talking about that. Uh, I don't want to get, let's not, let's not, let's just leave the whole, because that gets us down a route where, where this gets demonetized. So, no more, no more politics. Please, guys, I'm going to start blocking them. I'm going to start taking the comments down. Because what it will happen is it turns into an argument, and then I violate the rules. So, um, let's see. What else is going on? So, today, like I said, it's been an oh, Jesus Christ, it's been an hour. Uh, like I said, today, minimal stuff to do anyway. I'm sick, so there's a good chance that I'm just going to... Oh, I have a couple things. I had some video stuff I wanted to do, but I don't think I'm going to get a chance to do it. Eh, knives, eh? But I don't think... Like, there's so many videos that I would like to do, but I just don't know. It's just never going to work. I don't think you strip the pivot on your crux. What do I have in my pocket right now? Well, right now, I have got my Master Blaster. And in my left pocket... I've got this. Nope. I have my 940 Osborne as well. I do not look at sharpening systems. And it's not capstone, it's hapstone. It's the Russian one. It's basically a Russian Edge Pro with different stones. Which one? This one? I, I mean, I I know that he has an aesthetic that, like, you can look at knives and kind of see what, uh, like, you can look at a knife and go, oh, that's, that's like, something at Elliot. That you can pretty much pick Elliot's knives out of a lineup. They have an aesthetic. He has a, an artistic flow that he likes to carry over from knife to knife to knife to knife to knife. Like, you can look at the NTAC and see some of those same, like, qualities in other knives. And so, well, not all of his knives have finger choils. The NTAC did not. I added a choil to mine. It's not a full finger choil, but... So, you know... <laughs> Entac, Crux, Mordax, they, they, the, the way the flipper tab interacts into the finger choil, and it just, it sits, like, I'm not gonna lie, I've got a lot of other knives that have finger choils where the flipper tab becomes part of it, but his always, just, it feels like a trigger on a gun. It is that comfortable in that where it just pulls back. 
That's why I don't use a Wicked Edge. You can't. Well, bigger knives had bigger clips. I, I know that they have had bigger knives with a smaller clip. The Stinger XL was the first one I've seen with that. But, like, they had two different clip styles. My NTAC has the small two-screw bent clip, but then my Mordax has the larger, and the, the actual ones are longer. Elliot made this different. This is a very modified clip to go along with the aesthetic of this knife. Normally, it would be, it'd stay kind of wide. It'd be wider at the base and then be bent. So yeah, you can you can pick his knives out of a lineup, but they're all different enough. I mean, I even when I designed this, I even kind of brought that. I mean, that's rounded, but it's it's got that almost that same feel. It's still a little bit different though. Don't know. Haven't sharpened any of the Van X steel. I'm talking about steel, right? That's not a knife. Lock bar cut usually had a zigzag pattern. I like the fact that Elliot's knives that the. the no, I mean, I think that has more, you're talking like inside the, the cutout, down inside, like if you took it apart and looked, I think that has a lot to do with the machining. I, I don't know, it just depends. I, it depends on how they're doing it. My knives may... Uh, may or may not. I, I can't remember. If they get the steel from you, I don't remember. Um, I already had one, remember? The Smatch It. That was a custom, that was an Aaron Frederick custom Smatch It. And if I need one, I can get Nico's custom. Uh, but yeah, if you want to send it, sure. I like Aaron's knife. I love Aaron. Aaron's a great guy. I have some issues with some of his knives. Um, with some of the things, like I had to fix some stuff on Nico's knife to get rid of the lock stick, not lock rock, lock stick. And I mean, it was a simple fix, but, but yeah, that's, well guys, I'm gonna get off of here. It's been 58 minutes. I don't feel good. I think I'm gonna get started on, I've got a bunch of emails to respond to. <laughs> Picking yours up from Blade Show. Well, Chase, when you go there, tell him I said hi. The neck knives, I still, I still make them from time to time. I just haven't had any orders for them. I did not stop making them, Peter. Don't put words in my mouth. I stopped making them because people stopped ordering them. I still have some. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I've got a fever. I was, I was sweating. I was sweating all night. So I think I'm getting sick. So that's what I'm gonna do is I'm just actually, I took a shower last night. I'm probably gonna take another shower because I like sweat my shirt and shit through. So, all right guys. Well, I do need to get off of here. You guys take it easy. I'll see you tomorrow morning. Same-ish time, same-ish channel. <laughs> so, uh, let me see. Anything else big coming up? No, but I'm probably gonna do a video about that Curtis so I can get it all in and show you guys exactly what I did to it. I'll explain all the steps. Um, that was a time consuming. That's, I did that. So let's see. I started on that knife Thursday. <sighs> Thursday at around noon because I worked here at the house. Then I went to Elliot's shop, but I had to go to the vet and pick up my dog's medicine right before lunch. By the time I got back, it was around, it was around 11 ish. And so got started on it, and I worked on that from 11 o'clock in the afternoon, pretty consistent, all the way up to um, 1 o'clock in the morning. So from 11 in the morning till 1 o'clock. So I basically I worked from, I want to say Friday or Thursday, I did the live feed here, but I had already been doing some work, and then I did some work after. So basically, let's say 8. I started working at like 8. 
I mean, I know I did a live feed and everything, but then I went to, uh, well, I don't do actual, I don't measure the angles I do because I do have everything freehand, but I can, I can thin that edge out. And what you'll get is, so I want to warn you guys, like I had a guy complain. I sharpened a knife for him, he complained, fucking got it here. And then I used it for a while and it started to get dull. And then I put it on a sharp maker and all it did was hit the middle. It's like, I don't know what's up your edges. And I was like, they're a convex edge. I do them freehand. They're convex. They roll. So when you try to resharpen it, if you put it on an edge pro, you're gonna eat, you're probably gonna have to reprofile it. So that's something to be warned. I don't want you to get it and then you get it back, put it on your edge pro. It's like, fucking Mike's edge is fucking not straight. Yeah, I know. Because it's a convex. It's a consistent radius all the way from the origin of that bevel that I make all the way to the edge. It's it's a radius. So just keep that in mind. All right, guys, I got to get out of here. Love you guys. Like I said, link to my daughter's GoFundMe is down below if you choose to, and then there'll be... No, nah, there won't be. I'm not doing it today. There's not going to be stuff. But there it is down the... My... If you want something sharpened, though, or refinished, there's uh, my emails down below in the description. So... You guys take it easy. Those of you guys that did a super chat, I really appreciate it. Peter, you drive me nuts, but I can kind of tolerate you in moderation.